But you can tell me I am back. It is your motivation guy, Keith Allen. And today, we're going to be bringing you 30 tips and tricks which you should learn as much as possible to really dominate this meta. All right, when it comes to getting better at Fortnite, man, there is a world of information out there, but not everything always gives you structure. And so if you want pro one-on-one -on -one coaching from the top pros, go to ProGuys.com and sign up today using code RANKUP2021 for 20% off. They are designed to train you in every area and according to your pace, we highly recommend it. And without further ado, listen, we got to get right into this thing. Let's get this going. This trick will let you travel insane distancing using some of the features of the UFO in the center of the map. Once you're on the UFO, guys, go to the east side of it and we'll find this holographic icon near it. And when you go through it, it will give you an effect similar to Hop Rocks from Chapter 1 Season 4, except way more powerful. Once you get the Hop Rock effect, you want to walk off of the UFO and fly down to the launch pad below. Once you use the launch pad, it was going to send you extremely high up and it's going to allow you to fly literally anywhere on the map. Speaking of rotating in the open, if you ever see yourself running out of materials during the late game a lot, try to use natural cover like trees, bushes, and hills instead of your own builds to protect you while rotating mid to late game, alright? This is going to allow you to conserve more of your materials for late game tarps and box fights. So if you want to be able to go with the flow in absolutely any situation, like you're going to want to be multi-talented and practice with at least every shotgun in the game. And so this means when you're handed a great tack shotgun, you don't complain when you don't get a pump because you're going to know exactly how to use attack to get where you need. Of course, we all want to pump shot in our arsenal, I get it, but we never know what we're going to get when we're playing a game that has RNG and luck as a main factor in the matches. So make sure that you practice your skills with all weapons, man, to grow your knowledge of the game. So don't get caught up trying to completely full box an enemy when fighting for peace control. Sometimes, you know, only a couple of walls and a cone are all you need to finish off your opponent effectively. Alright guys, so this strategy will literally allow you to place ramps or cones through opponent's walls into their boxing without even pickaxing anything. So, how do you do it? Here we go. All you need to do is just push up against the wall that they are behind. Hold down a ramp or a cone and turbo build and then crouch spam. You need to be looking at a certain angle for this to really work, sort of looking down and to the left as you do it. So practice this technique enough and soon you're going to be able to do this technique consistently against your enemies. Alright, so when you're trying to take somebody's wall, instead of just replacing their wall with yours, you can actually place a ramp through the wall at the exact same time, giving you even more peace control. You can do this really on any ping successfully if you manage to really get the time right. After that, you could pull off something like a mongrel classic or simply just predict their movement into a rebox and just peace control them before they even know what's going on. Alright guys, so always try to pull out your glider in a valley or above water, and this makes it so that you can just pull out your glider lower to the ground and be the first person to land. When fighting players during early game, never use up your metal if you can. Always use wood or brick. You know, first and try to save your metal for late game tarping, since metal has more HP and can withstand AR sprays for a lot longer than wood and brick. Alright guys, so footsteps in Fortnite are really loud. They're so loud that you can even pinpoint an enemy's exact location if you have a great headset. However, you can actually stay completely silent when you're crouch walking and aim down sights at the same time. This is just super useful for early game looting and late game rotating when you don't have a lot of health and trying to stay silent from enemies. But you're going to start make sure that your keybinds allow you to edit, crouch and jump at the same time without ever having to take your fingers off of WASD. Sprint by default makes this a little easier when changing keybinds. All right, never sprint without jumping while you're rotating in the open. Jumping every now and again will make it harder for enemies to track your movement while aiming at you with an AR. And obviously, I mean, it minimizes the chances of you getting headshot sniped. The peanut butter edit is a box fighting strategy that will let you deal significant damage to your enemies without taking any damage in return if you do it right. All right, so if you want to be a legend at box fighting, both in arena and in creative, you simply have to know this technique. When build fighting or, you know, box fighting an enemy, always try to keep the enemy on the right side of your screen, no matter what, because doing this will mean that you have a better field of view, which gives you a huge advantage, especially when it comes to close range shotgun fights. The sooner and more that you can just see your opponents, the easier and faster it is to get a quick 200 pump on them. So prioritizing this and using other tips like the peanut butter edit in combination with this tip is definitely going to improve your gameplay by a huge amount. All right, so you can actually take zero fall damage when you land in a bush. So if you're high up and someone knocks out your builds, look for a bush to land in and you won't die. 
All right, always keep a close eye on your opponents, guys, especially through builds. This is known as tracking, and if you can do this well enough, you're gonna be able to predict your enemy's movement more easily and more effectively since you know where they are at all times. It also helps with your general awareness of what's going on around you. So when playing trios, you know, a common mistake when rotating is that players split up away from each other without even realizing. And then when one of them gets ambushed by an enemy trio, your teammates can't even help because of how far away you are from each other. So instead of just flicking your shots and shooting your shotgun, as soon as you get your crosshair slightly on the enemy, start timing your shots better and be more patient for more damage. Wait until you get closer to your enemy or when your crosshair is perfectly on the opponent's head so that you can guarantee a faster elimination. All right, you know, I always say this all the time. On my Instagram, at your motivation guy, when you connect to me, listen, taking 50-50s and box fights is a thing of the past, bro. You know, whenever you make an edit, try not to show a lot of your body's hitbox because any experienced player, you know, will simply just predict the edit and just headshot you as soon as it's made. All right, so when you're boxed up, weak, and, you know, a player is just trying to take your wall, do not rebox to the left or right. If you do this, man, your enemy can easily peace control you and eliminate you. Instead, rebox directly opposite and just drop down level from just where your opponent is. This is going to take them more time to get to you, giving you more time to heal. You know, one of the best ways to improve at Fortnite is to record your own gameplay and watch it back. Yes, I know we say this all the time, but you know what? This is one of the most important things of improving. You ask me all the time, how do I improve? How do I get better? Keith Allen, I'm hitting a wall. Come on, motivation guy, help me out. And I always say, do you revive review? Do you let someone else vibe review for you? Like, do you take your vibe review and you compare it to other people's games and compare it to your pros like that you look up to? I'm telling you right now, it's gonna help you a ton. And so when you do this, list out all the errors that you make. And so once you've made a list of five things that you can improve, go back into Fortnite and try to improve them on your own. Playing creative practice maps is something I always say as well. It's just a good way to quickly improve on certain mechanics. And it's also an effective way to warm up before a long session. However, uh, if you're serious about becoming a pro, don't only limit yourself to playing creative as creative matches are not as realistic or even sometimes as hard as real arena games. And so you ideally want to be an arena warrior as well as a creative warrior, right? When fighting a late game, you need to be comfortable playing both high ground and low ground to consistently place well. If you aren't that good really at late game situations, play 16 player creative zone wars to really sharpen that up. However, if you usually don't always want to be at low ground because if the zone ever pulls up to a mountain, you're going to have a hard time rotating up. So at least maintain a good mid ground level just to be safe. All right. So when playing in a tournament like a cash cup or FNCS, you'd be surprised that lots of players who make the top 10 don't actually play all 10 of their games. So make sure that you don't rush for any eliminations and just really play patiently for that number one victory. If you want easier placements and to stop dying during the mid game, start playing for dead side rotations. If you start doing this, man, you're gonna run into fewer people and have a higher chance of surviving until late game. When an enemy player starts pickaxing your wall, on the last hit as the wall breaks, shoot your shotgun at the same time and instantly place back a wall. If you do it right, you should deal some damage and they still won't even get peace control. This tip was popularized by Martos and is still super OP. All right, so for our tip number 27, use double movement if you don't already. Using double movement will give you guys more control of your character and allow you to peace control enemies quicker. If you see an enemy player inside of a brick or metal box, it's important to know that, you know, if they ever edit or reset an edit on a wall, since the wall is now weak, you can shoot the wall once with any shotgun and it's instantly gonna break. Allow you to replace the wall and get some peace control. All right guys, so for our 29th tip, performance mode on low. Mesh is really good. You know, it really allows you to see through builds more clearly when they are at first place or weak. So just make sure you turn this on for more FPS and for easier tracking abilities. All right, guys, so right now in the current meta, the best loader that you can have in the game right now is a gold pump, a gold scar, chug cannon, and minis. And that's just the objective truth. For this reason, make sure that you practice your pump and AR skills. Punch your questions, mate. Those are all the tips that we have for this video. Okay, so if there are any tips that we haven't mentioned, make sure to comment them down below. We're definitely going to check it out. Listen, I hope you guys are inspired, you know, to really to take your game to the next level because I really do want you to be great. Not only in this game, what do I say, but also in life. Listen, uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. I believe in you guys. And so no matter what has come against you, no matter what naysayers you have in your life or haters or people that don't believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. Listen, the sky is the limit. Keep going, guys. Never give up. Never surrender. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.